How's it going guys? My name is Top Secret R35 and welcome back to another fabrication project. So today, definitely way in over my head, I'm going to be building a rotisserie. Never done something like this before. So hopefully you guys saw in the thumbnail, car that's spinning around, that means I've been successful. So let's get going. Step number one. <laughs> So by simply clamping the one that I just drilled to the old one, I have now lined up the holes completely. I can use my drill and we can go straight through it hopefully. All right, so maybe don't skimp on the pilot holes, but that wasn't that bad. Well, alrighty then, we have two bumper mount brackets pretty much. I'm gonna go check if this works on the front because then I won't have to measure again. We can use these, it should be the same, but you never know. So first little task complete, I got the bumper mounts front and rear ready to go. Now I would have installed them and worked backwards, but I don't actually have the hardware for that. Uh, I need some bigger washers, the bolts are kind of loose inside there. But anyway, moving along to step two, I'm going to be using a two inch angle line, I mean square tube to build my upright and then uh, actually do some welding. So let's get on to that. So in a nutshell, according to my CAD drawing, the pivot point needs to be 38 and a half inches or whatever that is in millimeters, but uh, up there. And that's what will allow the entire, entire car to turn around. So I've got this clamped down. I've got the area relatively clean where I'm going to be welding. I check the squareness of everything. Make sure you do this, pretty important. Nice and square, so I trust it. I've got my welder set in. I've got it set for the, I think I've got 24 thousandths wire and I got, uh, I think it's like two millimeter thick, around about there. So everything should go well. So yeah, let's do this. All right, so I've got four tacks. Seems to be pretty reasonable penetration with the tacks. I at least can't get this to move. So now I'm going to run a bead for the first time on my channel. Woohoo! Wish me luck. Well, okay guys, I was actually expecting that to go much worse, but uh, almost looks like I was laying down something. <laughs> and that looks to be very good penetration, or besides my tech weld here at the end, it's kind of standing out, but that looks pretty hardcore. Yeah, I started kind of bad, then I ended off pretty well, so. So next up is the upright, well not the upright, the piece that's gonna go on the floor. So you see I've got this thing completely flipped now. Just gonna weld this together, and then that's one Pretty much done, and I'm going to duplicate this with the other sides. So that there is probably the best weld of my life. Check at that. Perfect. Nice penetration. Looks like the, the whole coins thing, you know what I mean? And I'm sure that they'll all go like this <laughs> from this point on. So I got a nice red hot penetration there. You can see how it like, you know, creates that sort of like a wave. Definitely got enough penetration. Ugh. My first weld looks terrible now compared to the ones that I did. But anyway, as long as it doesn't fall apart, it's all good. All right, guys. So I got the first little stand done. I put welds all the way around. So all four edges. But that was my first one. Not so good. But, uh, you know, it got better. But even with that, I mean, this is a huge freaking pole. It's going to be holding quite a lot of weight. This is not enough. I am going to put a cross brace from here going down there. So it's going to be nice and strong. So I'm about to make another one, obviously to the same template. So I'm going to do that off camera. And uh, next thing you know, I'll have it done. So give me a second, all right? So I have the second stand built. There we go, one, two. And I also did some work off camera. I got these bumper mounts all taken care of and uh, I'm gonna throw in a couple of welds over there but just got the bolt in place to do it for now. Same deal here at the back. So right now I'm making the mount that's going to go onto the bumper. Alright so it kind of is exactly what I wanted. I do have a slight 
cute little lip. As you can see, when I hold it flat like this, it's like that. So I should have put this more towards the edge, but I mean, it is so slight, you know what I mean? I don't think I'm going to have a problem because I do have clearance on the spin. I mean, with the two tubes fitting into each other, but I might just put a washer there or something like that, you know, just a small piece of metal to keep it flat. But yeah, I'll do the other side and try to do it better. Much better job on the second one. Almost no gap. Almost completely flush. So I mean, uh, I don't know, I might even just try to hold the other one straight and then just tack it. That'll be fine with me. So I've got a washer keeping this in place. So my dream of having this flush against here, uh, not so much going to happen, but not too much of a big deal. This year is level, this year is level, this year is square. So let's weld it up couple of tacks welded up on both sides and I should have the piece that spins So yeah, this is where we are right now. Pretty exciting. I got uh, pretty much uh, two helicopter blades over here. Let me show you the other one as well. So it's not, I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is not like perfectly square. You can see a little bit of touch here and there, but I'm going to first assemble everything with bolts before doing the welding. So even if it's a bit off, there is some play and uh, I don't think it will be seized up. Well, hopefully when we spin the car around, everything should be fine. So the first thing I want to say is a PSA here. I got a new chop off saw. Brilliant Milwaukee. It's like a hot knife through butter. My old one, just learned from my mistake guys. Don't buy cheap power tools. Uh, so I went ahead and I welded up the bumpers, the bumper mount pretty much. So even if this whole thing is a screw up, this is not going to change. So that's good. And then I also modified my uh, swivel point. You can see I this piece over here in the middle that's going to go into the frame. I shortened it up a bit and then cut the piece that goes onto the car to then put that bolt in so this doesn't move anywhere. And then also using the new chop off saw, I made six little, uh, about a foot long, 45 degree inserts. And those are all going to go over here and over here to keep this nice and sturdy. And then I also raised the car up. You can see I put two two by fours in there. So essentially I'm changing my design a little bit. The pivot point is going to be 41 and a half inches off the ground. And then from the bumper, to the pivot point, I didn't want to have like extremely long arms. I wanted to shorten it down a bit to like a foot. So next thing I'm going to do, we're going to make the hole through here. As you can see, I clamped it together. So we'll have a perfect line through both of them. So let's do that. Some advice about step drills uh, the harder you push not really the better it goes <laughs> but anyway this is going to be welded in solidly maybe about uh, like this I think because this is the core point that goes into the core so put a weld here put a weld here and my pivot's going to go into that so I'll just do the other side and we'll move on All right, guys, we are mostly on our way here. I uh, got this thing assembled. The only thing I need to do now is join the pivot point to the bumpers, pretty much. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've made a hole there. I'm just going to measure it. 
I'm going to need you guys to leave two F's in the comments uh, once for so I accidentally screwed up which side needs to have the short one on over here uh, sort of rushed but you know this car's so light it's not going to like crush over there so it's all good and also in my frustration I tried to cut this piece to use as a like a support as the 45 but I forgot that I'm actually going to need this to join the bumper to the pivot point so two F's there guys don't screw up whoops And don't forget to use the proper PPE, guys. I bought these welding gloves, but I only decided to try them out now. Uh, yeah, don't be like that. Alright guys, so this video is long enough already. I did another bit of sneaky work off camera. Drilled one hole into the frame over here and drilled two holes on either side of the bracket that goes into the car. So that's going to be for me to be able to turn it 90 degrees either way. So yeah guys, this is what it has come to. This will be it in its final form and uh, well, let's see if it works, right? So, let's take this thing out. So as you can see, the car is now resting on the rotisserie. And this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to pivot this thing at 90 degrees, especially for my thumbnail. All right, guys, well, the best way to prove it out was to actually use it. So I've been using it for the last hour. You can see I've gotten some of the undercoating off. Uh, the cleaner I get the car to the sandblaster, the better it will come back, obviously, because they're also going to be doing an epoxy priming. So yeah, the thing works. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, pretty basic, obviously. The one problem is that uh, I tried to use like a really thin bolt as, the, as to mount the thing at 90 degrees. So I upped the size of the hole. And right now I'm using a train track, you can't really see, it's kind of dark, but I'm using a train track pin to keep it in place right now. And that thing is obviously super robust, not going anywhere, so that's good for now. Uh, I might change that to an actual, uh, some sort of like three quarter inch by five bolt. So yeah, I'm a bit dirty now. Uh, that stuff was flying everywhere, the undercoating. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and, uh, you know, leave it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.